EPSS stands for E-point to septal separation. It's not a measure that I frequently use, but it was fascinating to look into this requested topic. It's most commonly used to assess systolic function in dogs in the preclinical stages of dilated cardiomyopathy, but it's also making a comeback in human medicine as well, particularly emergency and critical care echo, presumably due to the increased availability of handheld and portable ultrasound devices. Its main strengths are that it is easy to perform, reproducible, and has a stronger correlation with left ventricular systolic function than subjective assessment in inexperienced users. My preference would be to train our inexperienced users better, but have a look at this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. Hello. In this video, we are going to look at E-point to septal separation. This is a great useful tool to measure function of the left ventricle. And all you have to do is to gain a power sternal long axis, or you can do this in the short axis as well. So when you gain your parasternal long axis, you place an M-mode cursor through the tips of the mitral valve leaflets. We're going to do a live demonstration to show you how you do that. But I just wanted to walk through the trace you should expect to get when you put the M-mode through. So when we put the M-mode through and we bring up the trace, you should be able to see a clear delineation of the septal wall and also a clear delineation of the free wall at the bottom. And they should be echogenic because of the muscle. In between this, you will get the left ventricular cavity, and as long as your end mode is through the tips of the mitral valve, you will get the mitral valve movement through systole and diastole. For the mitral valve movement, you should get two deflections. Your first deflection is your E wave, and your second deflection is your A wave. The E wave represents early diastole. So when your ventricle relaxes, you get passive filling of the left ventricle, and as you do that, the mitral valve flicks towards the septal wall. And this is what you get, the little deflection there and that's your E wave. The A wave represents atrial contraction. So after we get passive filling, the atria contracts and once again we get a little deflection of the mitral valve towards the septal wall. The measurement we're interested in is this distance between the top of the E wave and the septal wall. So we can measure from the E wave to the start of the septal wall. And that measurement has a strong negative correlation with ejection fraction. Now we're going to do a live demonstration just to walk you through how to take the measurement in both the long axis and short axis. When you have obtained and optimised your right parasternal long axis view, zooming in if you want to, if that makes it easier, then press your M mode and align the line with the tips of the mitral valve leaflets. When you feel you're in the right place, can press M again to get your trace. You have your E wave and your A wave. If you have an animal with a particularly fast heart rate, you may want to increase your sweep speed to make it easier to measure. So I'm putting my M mode over here. My sweep speed is quite slow, so I get lots of E and A waves on my single strip. And I can increase my sweep speed And you can see now it would be easier for me to measure my E and A waves. From the short axis view, I'm going to do the same thing, getting my M mode cursor, putting it through both leaflets and obtaining my M mode trace with my E and my A waves. Again, I can change the sweep speed if I want to, to make it easier for me to measure from. EPSS is a great and easy tool. It's very reproducible and gives you an assessment of left ventricular function. But there is lots of other pathologies that can affect the result. So for example, if your patient has aortic regurgitation or mitral stenosis or left ventricular hypertrophy, we wouldn't recommend using this tool to assess function solely. Also, if you can't get any on-axis images. We do always recommend that any measurements you take, you still use your eyes to assess the function and make sure that measurements you're taking do actually match up with what you're seeing on the screen. I hope you enjoyed this video on EPSS. There's an article in the description below that just expands on this a little bit further and a link to our training program, which we would love you to join if you are looking to get more confident with your echocardiography.